we want to give you a property tour. <laughs> this is the last day that we will be here on our property in northern Michigan for this season. It's our season number two, actually. So we were here last summer and then this summer. And we realized that we haven't shown the property all that much. Mostly it's because we haven't done a whole lot. Well, we haven't done nothing. We'll be sure to show you a few of these projects in some upcoming episodes. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how we tackle projects. We just wanted to live on the property and see like what exactly did we need? Like what were the critical elements and go from there. <laughs> just like the first boat. Yeah. We did absolutely nothing to the boat and we did a shakedown sale to say yeah. like, what are the things that are absolutely critical for going down the river? I feel slightly cooped up just because we don't have a dinghy. So in short, it is right there. And the same thing with our van as well. We spent the first summer sleeping on the cushions from our boat on the floor of the van. It's a little bit rustic still. Yeah, that was ridiculous. <laughs> We realized very quickly that yes, a bed is, is uh, pretty pretty important. mission critical. Yeah, but it took us a year to add the vent, and then another year to add the seat and a window. And and of course, we would have loved to do all those things faster. It's just that when you have a million balls in the air, you can only juggle right. you know a couple at one time. That Nevertheless, was that was a terrible analogy. <laughs> we wanted to do a little walking tour of our property and kind of talk about some of the things that we want to do on the property, some of the things that we have done, just kind of like what it looks like now, and then talk a little bit about some of the dreams and plans we have for this land. Just to orient you in our timeline, we filmed this property tour last fall right before we left for the season. I just finished editing this video days before publishing it, so everything we talk about are plans we are starting to put into motion right now, summer of 2023. So we are standing in what is currently our driveway right now. Our house, our, the sailor trailer, <laughs> is currently right up here to my right. Behind me, we'd like to build our boat shed. We're planning to build roughly a 32 by 48 or maybe even 60 foot pole barn to store our boat while we're working on it and in the off season and also have a door large enough that we can park chip in it as well. And then we will convert our garage into like a workshop, a tool shop, a everyday toy storage. So like our bikes and things will go in there. But we'll have this huge, nice concrete floored pole barn boat shed to completely revitalize our new trimaran. There's so many issues with this boat, we know we're gonna have to fix because she needs a lot of work. <laughs> What'd she say? Those are boobies in there. <laughs> This property is facing almost due south. And that's one of the beauties of this property. So we have all of this amazing winter sun. And hence why we're squinting. <laughs> we were looking for raw land initially, and we found this piece of property, which already has a well and has a septic system, and came with this amazing 1964 mobile home, which has actually been really great. Because coming from our boat, we spent four years living on our boat and in our van. And our van was mostly unconverted. Okay, so let me set the stage real quick. The whole first season we were here, so last summer, yes to the music. Uh, we spent without hot water, um, with, <laughs> without like a working shower, um, and what was the other thing? All, all, we, all we had We didn't was, have a dishwasher. We didn't have a dishwasher. We didn't have a stove. Yeah, and we still don't have a stove, but the, never mind. So basically what we had was cold running water to the kitchen sink yeah. and a flushing toilet. Yeah. <laughs> We've done some big improvements inside and I we'll do a tour inside. I was gonna say those are upgrades from the boat, but they weren't. But, but we did have a roof over our heads and we weren't yes. living in the van, which is what we had originally planned on doing was finding land and like building a little camp around our van. Which would have been really tough. Nightmarish. Yeah. This has been amazing. Yeah. And we'll, we'll do an inside tour as well because we have made the space which used to look 
like 1970s hunter horror movie-esque. All right. With lots of dark wood paneling and smelled like smoke and musty and awfulness. Yeah. The ceilings are kind of low. The ceilings are a bit low. Yeah, I, we have to take down this ceiling fan because this will hit me in the head. <laughs> now the inside is quite... It's a little more homey now. Homey. But our long-term plans are eventually to build a house down in the south part front of the field for our family to come and stay with us or to rent out on Airbnb. We think building a house is a great way to help support our long-term sailing and cruising goals. And then, and then. The piece de la resistance. We would love one day to build a house for us. At the top of the hill. Top of the hill back there. That was what sold us on this property. The view is pretty awesome. Now we're gonna to move to the front of the property and show you where we are thinking that we're gonna build it's our first house structure. Most the rental likely. house. The rental house. Slash anyone who comes and stays with us house. We saw a coyote yesterday. Yeah. That's always one of the fun parts coming down the, the driveway here. Yeah, the animals just use this as a freeway. Yeah, you so pretty much always see deer prints. Always see deer, and then just yesterday, coyote. yeah, little little doggy footprints. And maybe some bear. Yeah, maybe bear. We've heard there's a black bear around here. Oh, and also turkeys. Tons of turkeys. Yeah. All right. Here it is. So we actually came out here a month or two ago and with a tape measure <laughs> just to kind of eye out where we think we'd want to have the house built or build the house ourselves. We haven't figured that out yet. This is actually part of our property as well across the drive. That's never going to be built on because it's quite swampy. So there's never going to be anything over there except a beautiful view. So that's the view for the house here. and. 180 degrees, you really can't see anything except for the neighbor's trees on either side. So, pretty cool. I have always wanted to build my own house. I'm super interested in like self-sufficiency and learning new skills and being able to do anything on my own. That's one of the reasons I've been super interested in sailing, learning how to do all of my own maintenance, create my own power, catch my own water. You know, all of these things have been super interesting to me. But one of the other things that I wanna do is be able to take a large role in building our own structures on this property. We've kicked around a whole bunch of different ideas for the style of architecture. We want a very minimalist and modern form, so we're thinking literally a giant rectangle, a big ranch structure. It is the most energy efficient, it's the cheapest to build, uses the least amount of materials for the most amount of interior space, and can look quite beautiful given the right architectural detailing. We're gonna be doing a ton of improvements on this property from you know, growing our own food, grading our own driveway, building our own house, installing solar, installing our own septic system. I would like to do as much of these things by myself as I can and get, you know, oversight from the professionals. If any of that is interesting, come join us along for the ride. One of the only exterior improvements we've done thus far on the property is to plant this little grove of fruit trees right in front of us. We planted two pear, one peach, and four apple. Next spring, we hope to plant a couple of cherries, maybe a plum, maybe this awesome thing called pawpaw, um, and- some thistleberry. Mulberry. I think, oh, and then we wanna do some bushes, like blueberry bushes. Lots of blueberries like and raspberries. Yeah. Our long-term plans for this area is we want to grow what is called a permaculture food forest. The whole concept of permaculture is designing a self-sustaining- Ecosystem? Ecosystem, thank you. That provides food for the humans who are tending yeah. to this food forest area, but also that brings in and attracts different animals and insects and pollinators. That and all contribute to the growth. And the health 
of yeah. this of this food producing ecosystem. We are planning to not be at this property for long periods of time. It takes a fair amount of work to get all of these systems growing together in a community and like planting them all. The more time goes on, uh, the less input the humans have to put in. And the more and output you get from it. Right. So when we heard about this, we We're felt like, like yes. that's what we want. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need because right. like Kirk said, we're not going to be here the whole year round. We need for it to be able to take care of itself eventually. So we put in some irrigation lines to give our trees in their young sapling state as much water as they can handle. This is going to be the central growing area of all of our trees that we will then plant around them all of uh, uh, an understory layer of bushes and other ground covers that will help those fruit bearing or food bearing plants uh, produce more food in abundance. This area will be changing quite drastically over the next few years and I'm super stoked on it. So this is what sold me on the property, the hills. This is the perfect little kids sledding hill if we actually are ever here in the winter <laughs> but it's the best slip and slide hill too and then back around behind the sailor trailer we have the big sledding hill or otherwise known as berry hill oh yeah babe do you want to go up berry hill you want to play with what she wants to watch a song when we get inside. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love that we have wood blocks in our windows. <laughs> and like paper strewn around our campfire. We had our last campfire of the season last night and it we was did. so lovely. Anyway, Berry Hill is actually lined with raspberries in some spots. We have a lot of work to do to get those fruiting. We harvested like a dozen raspberries this summer. <laughs> Um, even though we have probably like a hundred raspberry bushes. Yeah, the deer got to them first. Yeah, I think so. We originally thought, oh, we're gonna build something right at the top of the hill. But then Kirk had this idea that maybe we would build something sort of nestled in the hillside right there. And so we'd have both a south and a west view for the house and maybe it'd kind of be an L shape sort of nestled into the hill, which I really like the idea. It felt more cozy. Right at the top of the hill, it can get really windy and it almost feels a little exposed. Right here, we were thinking that we might build a, our new garage. Built into the side of the hill right here. And then maybe build a unit on top of that. A granny flat. Yeah. A granny flat, yeah. So anyone who has construction experience we would love to know your opinion on these grandiose plans. Like, are we crazy out of our minds? Like, it would be way too expensive or just totally logistically impossible, or it's all very doable. All of these plans are like long and longer term plans. We're talking about building three different residential units, but the whole point is that we're gonna start with one that's going to produce income for us. And that will help us fund building our house. And each successive building uh, allows us to build the next one because there's a possibility of rental income. So all of these plans might be a little bit ridiculous, at least for this hill. We don't know. We haven't really talked to anyone about building on top of this hill mm -hmm. who has also been here to see how steep this hill is. So we may be like resigned to just building into kind of like the base of the hill down there, which would still be okay. We just absolutely love this view. It feels so different up here. So what we might do is we might be left just building like a little off-grid uh, cabin. Some place to just get away and be different. And maybe that's the best use for the top of this hill is a getaway. That's how we've been using it now. We hike up here and we do like a little light workout or we just sit and we stare at the horizon. I just thought it would be really cool to be able to see that view all the time, but maybe it would start to lose its appeal. 
Yeah, just like I feel like I've never wanted to actually own a house on the beach because, well, one, practically it's too expensive. But two, when you live on the beach, you're looking at it all the time and then maybe it will lose its luster. Yeah. I mean, it would be cool to just run out your back door and, and hop in the surf. Yeah. So over here is where our giant berry patch is. And this is where we're thinking about at this level, because uh, there's kind of a flat spot right here, but this is where we would build our house firmed into the side of the hill. This is where the pole barn is gonna go down in here. This is where our sailor trailer currently sits. Right about here is where the garage is. Over here is where the food forest currently is. And then back out here is where the rental house is gonna go. So that's it. That's the tour of the whole property. Those are all the plans. Do let us know your opinion. We'd love to know what you think. <laughs> We're pretty certain that some of those things are gonna come to light someday. Maybe not all of them, but we're pretty excited. We got a whole bunch of things to sink our teeth into, a ton of stuff to learn, and we're excited to share it all with you. If uh, there's interest in this video of our exploring life on land and yeah. how this is going to support our ultimate sailing goals, which we haven't talked about, right? <laughs> um, give this video a thumbs up or let us know in the comments. So the way that this whole property fits into our sailing plans, the reason we bought this property was because we knew for the next few years we wanted a home base. And we picked Michigan because it's near family and there's also so much water around. There's so much sailing to be had right within a few miles from here. We've spent the last four years being quite nomadic and we hope to continue that style of living for a lot of years to come. But at the end of the day, it's really, really nice to have a place to call home, a place to leave a box of clothing, a place to feel that you know is always going to be there. And so that's the number one reason we wanted to buy property. The second is that we wanted a place to continue to improve our skills, to develop new skills, to be an open canvas. For gardening, for tinkering. Woodworking. Like just having a shop to do all sorts of different. To um, store all of the tools and right. things that we could yeah. never bring with us down to the boatyards to work on our boat. Right. It is the coolest thing to have our own, it's a stretch to call it a workshop right now. <laughs> also working on the boat and a place to store the boat. Was that number three? Four? <laughs> Hopefully we can use this property to grow our rental income. By growing a lot of our own food, it will offset uh, you know, some of the costs that we're gonna be spending on food when we're living up here as well. There's so many reasons that we wanna have a land base to call our own. Ultimately, for us to feel like we can go off and do an around the world voyage, having land I think it gives us the freedom to say in our minds, this long distance sailing that we want to do in the future is a stage in our life rather than like, we've sold all of our belongings, all of our property, all of our land, and like this is now our life. There's a, an interesting dichotomy there because we want to be traveling long term for a lot of years to come. But I think by having a place to come back to, it allows our minds the freedom to, to, to do that, to feel like we can go travel because we can come back somewhere. We're on our way to get the boat. <laughs> it was a very tight squeeze it was. last year. <laughs> Every little bit of weight counts. <laughs> oh. Hang on, hang on. Hey.